Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Addie. I have two young girls, a four-year-old and a one-and-a-half-year-old, and today I thought I would share with you some activity ideas and games and just ways that you can entertain your four-year-olds or your preschoolers or, you know, three, four, five-year-olds, whatever. Just some different activity ideas as she has gotten older. If you have not seen my previous activity video, I will link it in the description below so that if you need even more ideas you can check all of those out as well I have shared many many in the past but let's get to it for today the first activity I have for you today is to have them stack small objects so here I have her doing washers we have also done coins and another idea could be something like rocks or pebbles or something you just want something small that's different from the Legos the stacking cups kind of the bigger things you want them to work on their hand eye and have a little more of a challenge the next set of activities are blindfolded activities and that just forces them to use other senses and skills. So right now I have four different cups, all of objects of different weights. And what I'm trying to have her do is sort them from the most weight to the least weight. So just using her sense of feel and I'm kind of helping her put them where she thinks they should go when she tells me where she thinks. And once she thinks she has it, she takes her blindfold off and checks. For the next activity, I grabbed a handful of objects from around the house, all different sizes, textures, shapes, weights, etc. And then I put them into a brown paper bag. I then had her go through the bag and just tell me about the objects, not necessarily guessing what they were, but just telling me how they felt, if they were squishy, if they were soft, if they were heavy, if they were light, just telling me about them. And she could guess if she wanted to, she did like to guess, but this is just another good way for them to use their senses and their critical thinking. And then the last blindfolded activity is just to kind of lead them around the house or doing something while blindfolded. So in this case, I'm just telling her to take a few steps or to hop or to you know go around something. And this just helps work on their listening skills and it's a little bit of extra fun. Next up is to gather a few items or toys from around the house and have them work on unscrewing the battery compartments, replacing batteries, and then re-screwing that compartment. And kind of along with that is to get things from around the house that can be taken apart easily. So for example, a flashlight and let them try to take it apart, put the batteries back in, put it back together and just kind of figure out how things work. This is a very good practical life activity and something that my four-year-old really likes to do. Next up is a reusable DIY paint station. So for this, all you need is a piece of cardboard. A white piece would be best, but whatever will do. Then you're gonna draw a design, something that your child is interested in. Mine is really interested in nail polish and beauty and that sort of thing. So we did hands where she can decorate the nails and put makeup on her character, but you could do whatever your child is interested in. Once you have that drawn with a Sharpie, then you can put clear packing or shipping tape over top of the whole front side of the surface. Once that's done, give them some paint and a little cloth so that they can wipe the paint away when they wanna redecorate and let them paint. Like I said, this can be anything that you want. If you have a boy, you can do it as a fire truck. If you have someone who's really interested in dinosaurs, they could decorate a dinosaur. One thing we've done is our initials and they could practice, you know, letters or their initials and decorate their name. So it can really be whatever you want. And when they're done, you just wipe it clean, put it away and you can pull it out on another day. Up next is to tape some toilet paper rolls or paper towel rolls onto the wall and let your child drop objects through them. We took this project a little bit further and added some learning aspects to it. So I got the food scale from the kitchen and I let her weigh each object and we talked about which objects moved faster through the tube, the heavier ones or the lighter ones. We put the tubes at different angles to see if that changed anything and really just kind of had fun with this. My next activity would be to get them involved in the kitchen. Slicing is a great activity for them to be working on at this age. If you have not introduced that to your child yet and you're not comfortable giving them a sharp knife, then you can always start with a plastic knife on something like a banana and then move to a dull knife for things like cheese and pickles. And then as you move to the sharp objects, you can do things like mushrooms, celery, zucchini, and whatever else. 
Also in the kitchen, having them work on their measuring skills and their pouring skills is another great activity. And then along with that, cracking an egg. In the previous video, I had kind of done something on peeling eggs and slicing eggs with an egg slicer, but actual cracking of the eggs is another great skill to work on it for as well. Up next is weaving, and we kind of have a loom kit, but I kind of simplified it and just had her weave some paper through some of the bands. But you could also do this totally DIY at home and just get like a tray and tape on some string and then have them weave paper through. The next activity is a threading activity. I have gone through and put on a tray a bunch of different beads in a certain order. I then put all the same beads in a little bowl and she then had to make my exact pattern on her string of thread. And then when she was done, she had a beautiful necklace to wear around. My next activity is more pattern and sequencing work. This one is with counting bears and I just printed off a few patterns from online and then I had her determine based on the pattern what the next bear in line should have been. And these are kind of AABB patterns, but you can also move to harder patterns like ABC, ABC patterns as well as their skill and level needs to increase. Up next is to get out the blocks and build a structure. Then give them the opportunity to try to replicate exactly what you built using the same pieces. You can also do this with Legos or Magnetiles or Duplos or, you know, whatever kind of building structure you want. But this is just really good for direction following and problem solving and so many other things. The next activity is to use scissors and practice cutting. If you're not ready for them to have real scissors, you can start with the training scissors and cut things like Play-Doh. And once they've got that down, you can move to paper with real scissors and let them just cut in any way that they want. And once they like that, you can start doing lines on paper and just seeing if they can cut the lines. And when they've mastered that, you could draw a shape on a piece of paper and have them start cutting out shapes as their level increases. The next activity is to throw objects into a target. In this case, I'm doing bean bags in a bucket, but it does not necessarily have to be that. It can be bean bags into some other sort of thing like a hula hoop or even a car seat. This could be throwing bundled up socks into a laundry basket. You know, you have to use your imagination here. I would recommend making a line for them not to cross because obviously if they miss, they are more inclined to cheat and that is not the point of this game. So I would definitely recommend drawing a line and you can switch up underhand versus overhand tossing as well to add in a little new element and muscle use up next is tracing i've had her trace things like her hand different objects cookie cutters shape printouts you know you name it but four is a great age to start working on some tracing skills and the nice thing is after they've traced those objects they can color and decorate them for even more entertainment Next up is color work and here I have put primary colors in some shaving cream and then I'm letting her mix them, the colors in the shaving cream together to see what colors they might create. She really enjoyed seeing magic colors appear. And we've also done this same concept with water and food coloring and a little dropper and she just drop a few drops of one color in a little section and then drop another color to see if it creates a color. Another activity is to use a geo board or you can totally DIY this at home just with a piece of wood and some nails and some rubber bands. But basically you can just give them the board with the rubber bands and have them build anything they want. And then as they start to kind of enjoy that and understand that, you can give them some picture cards as well and have them to try to create the shapes or things from the picture cards. My next idea is to play with some shapes and I just made these out of an old Triscuit box and put some colored shapes on them. And first I just kind of let her play with the shapes and build things that she wanted out of them. So she is trying to build like a person right now. And then another way to use them is just to put the shapes together to see what kind of other shapes you can make out of them. So in this example, triangles, making a diamond or a square or a hexagon or a circle or, you know, whatever it is that you want to make out of the shapes that you're using. 
My next activity is a baby washing station. And this activity is one that she really loves because she is obsessed with babies right now. But it does not necessarily have to be a baby if your child is not into baby dolls. It could be a dinosaur. It could be, you know, a PJ mask thing. It could be a Clifford the Big Red Dog. You know, whatever it might be, a washing station and bath station for that item. This is also really good if you have a sibling on the way and you want them to kind of learn about taking care of another person, just washing them, lotioning them, diapering them, you know, whatever it might be. This is really good for that sort of thing. Next up is an obstacle course. And yes, I have mentioned this one before, but this one is so timeless. And at four, you can kind of have them help you come up with the building process and the types of things they want in their course. And you can also add in the element of time and have them do it and time them and then have them do it again and see if they can do it faster on subsequent attempts. And it can just be harder things and they can change the course as they go. This is just such a good activity for all ages, even until up way past where she is age-wise. And especially as we've been inside so much because of COVID and the winter time, it's just such a good indoor activity as well. And another good gross motor activity, I'll just add in here something they probably already do, is just jumping on the bed. And this is all ages really, but she really does enjoy this, especially since we do have a trampoline, but in the middle of winter with snow, she's not really using it much. And I let her jump off objects too. She really seems to like doing that. And we just have a little mat down for her. If you have a couch, which um, you could put the cushions on the floor, that would be another idea. Just using those big muscles and those gross motor skills is so good for a four-year-old. All right, those are the activities for my four-year-old. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it gives you some idea and you found some things that your four-year-old would enjoy as well. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.